patriarchy and racism are actually foundation, then women can be treated as throwaways, other, not worthy. So the whole concept of boys will be boys, mm -hmm. number one, was never extended to black boys. Right. Black boys can look sideways at a white woman and be lynched. But number two, boys will be boys denigrates women. It suggests that your behavior as boys will be boys is to be uh, discounted. Who was the person you acted on when you were saying that boys will be boys? Who did you take your boy out on? Um, and what happened to her and her family? Like this. Thinking about the way our society being constructed as a white male, predatory, capitalist patriarchy has ground lots of people to the bottom. And that the very foundations of our constitution speak to that. That we were three-fifths of a person. We were legally a fraction of a person. And the warped thinking that allowed people to reduce us to three-fifths of a person. In other words, we were not nothing. We were nothing, we would have been counted at all. So we were counted for the purpose of political supremacy. In other words, we were counted so that the South could get more electoral votes. So it wasn't that you thought that enslaved people were nothing. We were enough to be counted for voting, but not enough to be treated as human. There, in economics, there's this thing called a production possibility curve. You have your factors of production, and you decide how you're going to work with them. You know, I mean, the classic one is guns or butter. So do you do war or do you do consumption? I look at it as, first of all, the production possibility curve we have is unfair. We don't have our fair share. So what, however we spend our resources, it isn't fair. So we should see a production possibility curve that's pushed outward if we had our fair share. And that's one conversation. It's a public policy conversation. It's a reparations conversation. It's a series of conversations. Okay. But the other conversation is, what are we doing with what we have? And I would also posit that we are in the interior of our current possibility curve. In other words, we could be doing more with what we have. So we have two ways to go, and they're not either or. And that's the other thing that frustrates me about the way that some of our organizations work. It's not either or, it's both and. And I credit one of my, my provosts when I was at Bennett, uh, Dr. Marilyn Mobley, you saw always say both and, and I was frustrated with her. But uh, both and is really, how, I mean, so you deal with the interior and you deal with the exterior. So the exterior is the public policy story that we must tell and must carry, that we must get our Congressional Black Caucus and others to do to create legislation that makes us whole. Okay. And But the interior is what we do about us. We have $1.3 trillion in a mm -hmm. year. We only have six less than $6 billion deposited in Black-owned banks. Less than 3% of our dollars are deposited in Black-owned banks. What's up with that? Um, do we really believe the white man's ice is colder? Perhaps. So while we have to fight for fairness, we also have to fight for mind fairness. We have to fight for basically a healthy mind that says we do deposit in Black-owned banks. We do do business with each other. If we have $1.3 trillion, how come we have so little Black entrepreneurship? Many of us don't support each other. Now, there are lots of reasons. And there's history. White America played a number on us. And we have not begun to unpack it. We do believe that the white man's ice is cold. We do believe that we get acceptance from going to places or doing things with white folks instead of our folks. Uh, we don't love each other as much as we should. Because if we did, we would support each other more. If even 10% of our dollars went to Black-owned business, we would increase our own um, economic power exponentially. If even 10%, we don't even spend 10% of our dollars on each other. And um, it's challenging. See, you know, if you swim in racist water, you don't realize that you're racist. You just swim in the water, you're a fish, you swim. You don't know what's happening. 
And so I think we swim in this water. We have been polluted by this water. We are products of a racist, predatory, capitalist system. And let, and let me add gender to that too, because we have issues in our community around gender. So it's racist, sexist, predatory. And the predatory piece, Dr. King talked about when you can thingify anybody. So when you have all that going on, we're not self-aware. And so you have a whole lot of black people who are doing very well, but could do more for their communities. Or oh, they belong to their sororities and fraternities and they tithe at their churches, but have they stepped out? And the answer is often no. And they're comfortable. <laughs>